ahead and move on to our last story. Now, I had heard about this when I was a kid and I thought it was hilarious. The visual of it is super funny. I went and I did more research on it now and I had to go look at like death totals and stuff like that. And it's it, it's still kind of funny. I'm sorry to say, but it's still kind of funny. So you may not, <laughs> you may not think so, but let's journey back in time. Let's get in Jason's time taxi. Copyright. And we're going to drive back into time. We're going to the year 1919. January 15th, 1919, in fact. And we're... Pull up. We hop out of the time taxi. Now, this is a great time to be alive. It's before the Great Depression. I think the war is over. Or it's ending. World War I's ending, if it's not over already. You're just walking around Boston. You're like, yeah, you know, it's winter time, so that sucks. But... You know, no big deal. Walking around Boston. Now, they had this, in this city of Boston, they had a giant, they this they had a giant tank of molasses. Now, it was 50 feet tall and 90 feet in diameter. It contained 2.3 million gallons of molasses. You're like, well, how, well, how many chocolate bars are they eating in Boston? And probably a lot, but... This was used for, like, molasses can also be used to make rum and ethanol. But the I think Prohibition was going on, so they weren't drinking the rum. Maybe the ethanol. And then you could use it to manufacture munitions. So it was just sitting there. In a, and in the area, they also had, like, a, a plant that would process it and all that stuff. So it wasn't just, like, sitting there as a landmark. Like, it was actually being used. Now... This giant container of molasses had some serious problems. It hadn't been tested properly. I guess you're supposed to test tanks by every so often emptying it, you know, get all the molasses out of it, and you fill it full of water and you check for leaks, and you're supposed to fill it with water all the way to the top to feel for the pressure of it. This thing had leaks. It actually had such bad leaks that people in town would be like, hey, Jerry, you hungry? And they'd be like, yeah, sure. They're like, hey, let's go down to the molasses tank. And they would walk up to the tank and molasses would just drip out of the sides. They would get buckets of free molasses. And then they would just walk. I imagine them like Winnie the Pooh. They're like sticking their hands in the bucket and just like <laughs> eating it right out of the <laughs> eating, eating it right out of the bucket. The people who ran the tank were like, oh, man, that looks so terrible. Look at all those leaks. We should really fix that. And they fixed it by painting it brown. So you couldn't see the leaks anymore. They're like, that? That's genius. That is such a great idea. That would be like if a doctor like saw a dude stabbed and they're like, hmm. And they like paint you red. And they're like, well, you're not bleeding anymore. So the thing had issues. Now, the coup de gras on this tank of molasses was that it was an unseasonably warm day. On January 15th, 1919, unseasonably warm for that area in January was 40 degrees. That was enough to cause a little bit of swelling in this tank. Now, people were hanging out, like I said, just hanging out. It's 1919. What do you do in 1919? You you make dresses, maybe? And run a wheel down the street with a stick? Not die of polio? I don't know. I don't know what people did in the night. I don't even really know what people do nowadays. But anyway, so you're just doing normal 1919 stuff. You're uh, flipping coins and stuff, whatever. But anyway, so they hear... The sound of, like, metal starting to give. Now, some of the old timers are probably like, I recognize that sound. Something bad's gonna happen. All of a sudden, pop, 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 pop. It sounded like machine gun fire as rivets start shooting out. Out of the support columns for this. Now, even people who aren't that old know that something bad is about to happen. Now, again, this thing is 90 feet in diameter and 50 feet tall. It smashes into the ground when it falls. A, a wave, a wave, 2.3 million gallons of molasses, a wave 20 feet high of molasses begins to engulf the city. People just start booking it. It hits with such force, there is a building, its bottom story 
got demolished and then the other two stories just crashed into the wave of molasses. Now you're thinking, dude, molasses is like super slow. It would lose a race against syrup. True. But the force that it fell at and the pressure that it was breaking loose, the wave of molasses was going 35 miles an hour. Cars in 1919 didn't even go 35 miles an hour. People were running, but there was no escape from this thing. The way the 25 foot wave crests quite quickly, but it doesn't matter because the rest of the city was getting engulfed in about two to three feet of molasses. Now imagine getting hit by a baseball bat going 35 miles an hour, but it's only two to three feet. So it's, you're only getting hit in the thighs. You're getting knocked down. People were running and they couldn't outrun it and they got knocked down and they're not falling in water where they just sit up and go, that sucked. They're instantly covered in sticky molasses. A train car, a train car got tipped from the impact of this thing. A half mile of sticky, sweet destruction. Death toll, 21 people and several horses killed. This thing was knocking over horses. Now again, you're thinking, okay, yeah, a horse gets knocked down and just gets back up. But because the stickiness, because of the slipperiness, because of the texture of it, rescue crews showed up and they said, let me find this quote. A rescue crew shows up, and this is what this guy says, molasses, waist deep, covered the street and swirled and bubbled around the wreckage. And again, because houses are obliterated by this surge. So it's not just a bunch of people like, it's not like a little rascal's prank where like the mayor of the town is like, whoa. I mean, there's, people were getting killed by the debris. Just flying at them, floating down. It was horrible. Back to the quote. Molasses, waist deep, covered the street and swirled and bubbled around the wreckage. Here and there struggled to form. Whether it was animal or human being was impossible to tell. Only an upheaval, a thrashing about on the sticky mass showed where any life was. Horses died like so many flies on sticky flypaper. The more they struggled, the deeper in the mess they were ensnared. Human beings, men and women, suffered likewise. So yeah, you're just, you're basically glued to the ground. Forget the fact that it's 40 degrees out. Forget the fact that you got knocked over by a, a force going 35 miles an hour. You're basically now glued to the ground. 150 people were injured in this. You're like, Jason, that's really not funny. It's kind of... (laughs) It's kind of funny. Because, again, molasses. Like, so... Yes, people died and horses died and that's sad. But it is funny because... (laughs) For years afterwards... So... Okay, so... For four years afterwards... Whenever it got hot in that city... In that part of the city... All you would smell was molasses. It basically soaked into the landscape. You would be, you would wake up and you're like, oh man, good thing that molasses thing happened 10 years ago, man, that was scary. And you would just smell the molasses everywhere. Be like, ah, oh. it's like, imagine if you smelled a 9-11 every year, that would be the equivalent of that. That might be extreme example, but you know. People, okay, so you had people escape who did escape it, successfully escape it, obviously. And they left that area of town. They're like, screw you, Molasses Town. I'm out of here. Then they tracked molasses all over the rest of Boston. And rescue workers who showed up and were like working in it, they got molasses all over their shoes, all over their hands, all over their pants. They would take the subway home. Molasses track everywhere. It basically got to the point where anything that was button pressed was covered in molasses because everyone had molasses. All the guardrails when you're walking around had molasses. The whole city got basically covered in this stuff. Not literally, but there was just like handprints everywhere. And you're saying, Jason, that's that's still not funny. A bunch of people died. Yes, yes, I get it. A bunch of people died. The Great Molasses Disaster. Oh, and then, of course, the company said, "Um, no, that tank was in perfect order. Anarchists blew it up because we were trying to use our molasses to create munitions and those nasty anarchists those foreigners over there are trying to destroy our way of life so they blew it up to hurt our country they actually got sued it was the first class action lawsuit in massachusetts history and they lost it because that was the dumbest excuse possible they did actually come out and admit 
that it had failed several safety tests. They did try to say the anarchist thing, but again, that that didn't fly. But it had failed several safety tests, and they had to pay a bunch of people a bunch of money. And I would also say, part of their punishment would they be able to eat and wear nothing but molasses for seven years. And they'd have to sleep in molasses next to a thrashing horse. Punishment fits the crime. Molasses people. So that is the Great Molasses Disaster. The Great Molasses Flood, I guess, is the official name. It actually is the official name. That's what it's known as. The idea of having... If someone said, hey, dude, you want to outrun molasses? I would be like, yeah, totally. I would take that bet in a heartbeat. But again, I mean, then I I didn't know molasses could go this fast. And actually, there was a scientific test. Because people have debated whether or not the molasses was actually moving at that speed. Some kids or some college students did a test and they used a model version of the neighborhood and poured caro syrup. And they said it actually, it's probably more scientific than how I'm explaining it. But they did this test and they said it is actually quite possible that it was going that fast and caused that much devastation. It's not just hearsay that it was knocking buildings off of its foundations. So, great molasses flood. Tasty yet deadly. The best way to die. That was a clip from our daily podcast, Dead Rabbit Radio. Dead Rabbit Radio is available anywhere that you listen to podcasts. It's daily paranormal, conspiracy, and true crime news. If you want to hear the full episode that this clip came from, check the link below. Please like and subscribe. And hit that little bell, too. That does some magical stuff. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.